No, even if it's not, just answer by faith. Is that okay with you? All right. All right. First, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Father, we cannot actually do anything without you. And on this very first Sunday, Lord, we'd like to hear your word. So open up our hearts and our eyes so we can hear you, actually. Inscribe your letter on our hearts. The ultimate desire is that we become your epistles. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're talking about the gifts of the Spirit. After that, we will now go into the fruit of the Spirit. This series, like I said, will continue every Wednesday teaching service and every Sunday until we went, go through it all. But today, we want to start by just introducing the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we will take our text from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the first 11 verses. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 to 11. Now, as we read, I want you to pay attention to how many times the scripture referenced the Spirit or Holy Spirit in these 11 verses we are about to read. I wanted to warn you this before we read it. Because we are talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Notice how many times the Holy Spirit is referenced in our text. Is that okay with you? Are you paying attention, Rosopha? All right. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles. We were, thank God, not anymore. We were Gentiles, carried away to these dumb idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diff diversities of operations, but it's the same God who walks all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another designing of uh, spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Last verse, verse 11. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. How many times did you notice the spirit was referenced? Well, it's, in, it's, it's good that you paid attention. Because remember, we are talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, before you can talk about the gifts, you will have to reference the source, the one who is giving them, the Holy Spirit. He is part of the Godhead. When we say the Godhead, we are talking about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are one, just like your spirit and your soul and your body is one. Just like the light you see from the sun and the heat you feel, okay, and its effect of the sun on your body. All are one sun, not three suns, the same. One sun. Trinity is something like that. A little bit difficult sometimes to explain, but you get it. It is like that. It is like water, you know, in the atmosphere in the form of dew. It is the water we drink, and that same water can become like ice, 
Three waters? No, same water. One God. Okay? But in different forms because of the different ways they interact with us. Here in this text, in verse 5, he is referred to as Lord. In verse 6, he is referred to as God, same God. So the Holy Spirit is the administrator at this time, and he is also the executor of everything that God has for man today. He is the, some of you who are conversant with a will somebody writes and puts in place before he dies, knows that a will is nothing except you mention some names of the people who are going to be executors of that will. Well, the new covenant, which is a product of the old covenant, all of the Bible is made up of two covenants, the old and the new. The executor of God's covenants Guess who he is? Talk to me, the Holy Spirit. Without knowing him, therefore, listen, listen to me. Listen to me, let me say it again. There is nothing about God or in the Bible that can benefit any man without the Holy Spirit. Because he is the executor and the administrator of God's will concerning man in every area. But especially at this time, this time we are in, the church age is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. It is not God the Father, it's not Jesus since after he ascended up. It is the Holy Spirit that is now in charge of every activity that you see happen in the church. It is important to understand that. He will be in charge of the church age until his dispensation ends and guess when it is ending when the trumpet that will capture us up to meet with our bridegroom our lord and king during the rapture the rapture ends the dispensation of the holy spirit so the holy spirit today is our god with us he is the representative of the God the Father, God the Son, and God the... He is God with us. Let me remind you, the main problem the Jews had with Jesus Christ when he came in the flesh, it was prophesied, they were expecting him, but when he came, they were not able to accept him as God. Maybe some teacher, they called him teacher, rabbi, master, but they were not able to accept him as God himself. That was the main problem between Jesus Christ and the Jews. I know in some way it was prophesied that that would happen. What I'm saying was Jesus Christ could not be of benefit to a lot of the Jews and in their ignorance they fulfilled God's purposes. Their relationship with Jesus Christ did not... Remember, Jesus Christ's coming was specifically to the Jews as a nation. When he sent out the Israelites, his disciples to go and, fell, uh, to go and preach, he said, don't go into the way of the Gentiles. Go into to only the house of the lost sheep of, the, of Israel, the Jews. He came basically to the Jews because... When the Jews repent and come to know God, that was God's tight, the Jews, to the rest of the world. Then they will become a witness to the rest of the world. Well, their relationship with Jesus Christ wasn't quite good because they didn't recognize him as they should. Today, you and I stand to make the same mistake by not relating to the Holy Spirit as we should. Most of us don't know. We still talk about God. We still talk about Jesus. Is that good? Yes. Because there's no competition between the Godhead. But to be precise, every child of God that says, I am a child of God, born again Christian, should pay attention to the Holy Spirit more than anything else. Because let me say it again. 
if you are going to ever receive something from God or from the Bible, including salvation, healing, favor, my God. Are you, are you hearing me? Just forget all of this that happens, okay? Sometimes electronics, they have their own brain. But if we are going to ever receive anything from God, it has to come through the Holy Spirit. So not understanding him is the key thing. So how do we get to know him? Let me put it this way. Knowing him is the key to receiving any of these gifts we want to talk about. Knowing him is the key. And when we talk about knowing the Holy Spirit, what are we talking about? It, it's a lot. But this aspect is most important. That although he is equal with God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is uniquely different from them all. Uniquely different. Why is it different? Because his purpose is different from God the Father and different from God the Son. God the Son came as man to die on the cross. The Holy Spirit will never die on the cross. Are you with me so far? His purpose here on earth, let me tell you very clearly. He came as the executor and forcer to make happen everything in the heart of God for human beings. Number two, he came to reveal God's heart to man. He is the revealer of everything, every promise God has for man. His job is to unveil to man every plan of God, every plan of Jesus Christ. He is to reveal Jesus Christ to every heart. Without the Holy Spirit, you will not know anything about Jesus. In fact, nobody will give their life to Christ without the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit likes to be at the background, and his main job is to pro project, introduce God the Father, God the Son, and what the, their intent and desire is for man into the hands of man. Without the Holy Spirit, you will never be able to love God. You'll never be able to love Jesus Christ or accept him. He is the one that makes Jesus real to us. I don't have the time. I could give you a lot of examples. But that is the power of the Holy Spirit. Intimacy with him is only possible when we get to know him for who he is, what he does, what is his work. You cannot be intimately close to somebody whose work you don't know, you don't understand. So the more we come to understand, embrace him, and identify with what he does, the more we come to know him. Now, the Holy Spirit is a person. It's not just wind and just a feeling. He is a person, although we can feel him and other things. But as a person, we cannot have part of him. It's either he is with us or in you or he is not. But it is intimacy with him that allows him to show more of his presence in us. Let me tell you a story. Unlike the child that they are allowing to disturb us here upstairs, like the, the children should not be allowed to stay in this side. The children are there. Only adults should be here. We keep saying it ever and over and over again. The children, teachers in our next workers' meeting, that's one, one of the things we need to be talking about. There was a church service. After the church was, uh, the service was over, a mother and her daughter was driving back home. The mother noticed that this 11, 12-year-old girl was very quiet going home after service. 
unusually quiet. After they drive, they've been driving on for some time. The mother noticed the quietness and turned to the, her daughter and said, daughter, you've been quiet today. She said, the little girl said, mom, I've been thinking. She said, thinking about what? He said, there is something that the pastor said in today's uh, preaching that is disturbing her. 11, 10, 10, 11, 12 year old girl. So the mother said, oh, what is that all about? And so the little girl said, mom, the pastor said that God is a very big God. The mom said, yes, he said that. And the daughter said, and he also said that God lives in us. The mother said, that's true. He said that too. Then the girl said, if God is big like that and he lives in us, shouldn't that show to everybody that God lives in us? Logic. True or false? True. It should show. The presence of God in our lives should be evident to everybody else. Question. How many people by just looking at you in your act, in your word, in everything you do, see Christ lives in you by his spirit? And that is the presence, that is the job, the chief job of the Holy Spirit to dwell in us and to make God known through us to other people. So he does that by giving us gifts, gifts in our lives, and then by giving us his fruits too, which we're going to talk about. The gifts and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. He is the God with us, so everything is not the gift of Jesus or God, no, not the fruit of Jesus or God, no. All of it, the, the fruit of the Spirit the gift of the Spirit. The gifts are plural. There are many. We have read about them. The fruit which we will come to talk about in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, is always singular. Not fruit, not plural, but fruit, one. When we come to talk about that, we will be able to deal and explain about that. But the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life will reflect or should reflect God's nature and God's character in every child of God. Everyone that claims, I know God, I'm a child of God, then his nature, God's nature and God's character. That is the chief purpose of the Holy Spirit. Number one, to reveal God to man on earth and to show forth his qualities and the nature of God through us to mankind. And that is the chief purpose of the Holy Spirit. The more we come to know who he is and walk with him in that way, he is free to now walk in our lives and produce God's nature in us. What is the main difference between the gift, the gifts, plural, and the fruit, singular? Like I said, when we come to talk about the fruit, we will talk more about that. But for now, let me give you an explanation about the main difference between the gifts and the fruit. Say it with me, the gifts and the fruit. Say fruit. No, fruit is one, not plural. The gifts and... I'm still hearing fruits. The gifts and the fruit. Okay, we will come to talk about it. But quick, one of a well, few that I want to give you. Number one, the gifts, as we have mentioned, let me let me mention the gifts again. Number one, the gift of the word of wisdom, the gift of the word of knowledge. Number three, the gift of faith. And the gift of healing, gifts of healings, and then the gift of the working of miracles, the working of uh, the and prophecy, 
the zoning of spirits, different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. These are the gifts. Let me mention them one more time again. The word of wisdom, the word of the knowledge, word of knowledge. And then number three, faith. Number four, gifts of healings. Number five, miracles. Number six, prophecy. Number seven, designing of spirits. Number eight, different kinds of tongues. And number nine, interpretation of um, tongues. These are the gifts. And then the fruit, singular, but also in different forms. And we will talk about it later, like I said. But the main difference between the two, now all together, all of them, two of them, now shows the character and the nature of God. You can, okay, let me just go on. Number one, the main difference between the two is the gifts, the gifts that we are talking about, they represent the power of God or the abilities, God's abilities. The gifts represent God's power. The fruit represents God's nature and character. Let me take that one more time again. The gifts that we have just mentioned, the nine of them, represent God's power or God's abilities, and the fruit represents God's nature and character. In one word, what is God's nature and character? Christ-likeness. Number two, having the gifts without the fruit, having God's, the gifts of the Holy Spirit without the fruit, is very dangerous. I have been a Christian for some time, known a lot of men of God. When we have the gifts of the Spirit, there is power. That is ability, anointing, power, cast out devil, do all of that. To have the gifts of the Spirit is great. But without balancing that with the fruit of the Spirit is dangerous. Because you'll be power, 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 power. How many of you know unregulated Nepa power will kill you? And many Christians, anointing, anointing, power, 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 power. And before you know it, we are hearing about, oh, so-so person is now falling. He's no more a Christian because he was lacking the fruit. And what did I say is the fruit about? Character. The nature, the Christ-likeness of God. God, Jesus Christ, I mean, had power. But because he had character to balance it, there is no one that can say that he was involved with some kind of uh, ungodly thing. So the gifts without the fruit or the character of God is very dangerous to our Christian testimony. On the other hand, having the fruit, just the character and the nature of God, without the gifts is ineffective as a witness. You have the character of God. You are a decent person, very, you know, submissive to God, nice, but no power. How can you be able to help somebody that is hurting, that is sick? How can you cast out a devil? Now, if you look at the Christian dom, many Christians are in one extreme or the other. They are nice, decent people, never will offend anybody. But if you talk to that brother and say, my brother, my sister, I've been having this headache for some time. Can you help? Well, just believe God. Hallelujah. That's not going to help anybody. Remember, we are called to be witnesses. And you will need power to be able to effectively witness about God. So a balance of the two are needed to be an effective witness of Christ. Number three, I'm trying to put side by side the difference between the gifts and the fruit. The number, th number three difference is that the gifts are a product of God's generosity. The gifts are a product of God's generosity. If I were... Okay, just a moment ago, you as Christians just came to give gifts to the pastors as a pastor's appreciation. How long did, does it take you to give that gift? 
One week. How long did it take you to give the gift? If you were to give a gift to somebody, how long does it take you? Very quick. Do you know that these gifts that we have mentioned, you can receive them before we share the grace today? Yes, not, yeah, look at me like, I'm telling you the truth. Okay, let me, give you, let me give you something that is simple for you to understand. Maybe you will accept it easier. If there is an unsaved person in our midst, is it possible that that person can get saved before the service is over? Will we be able to have time to allow the person to get saved? Will we have long time enough to, for the person to get saved? How long will it take? A, salvation is a gift. Just like any of these gifts. Now listen to me very carefully because the reason why these things are not operating in the church is because people don't know. And then we will come to that in a moment. One of the reasons is that we think we have to do something to merit, to earn having the gift of wisdom, the gift of healings. We were raised because we were not taught. That's why we are teaching you. You can have the gift of healings before the service is over. It's a gift, meaning you don't have to do anything. All that you need to do is to simply receive it. Just like you received salvation as a gift. And there is no other gift I know of that would be greater and bigger than salvation. And if that gift was received like that, you can, by a simple exercise of your faith, you can receive a gift. It's an act of God's generosity. The Bible said in verse 11 that he, the Holy Spirit distributes them individually as he wills. Remember, the only thing is you cannot choose, you cannot tell the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit you see, Holy Spirit, you know, I am from the East. I don't like too much of the word of wisdom. Just give me the power gift. Bah! When I slap somebody, the person wake up. No, you can't tell him that. He is Lord. He is God. He is the one that decides which one you have. But it's a gift he can give you tonight. Now, how many of you would want the Holy Spirit to give you a gift before the service is over? Let me see. Okay? If I make an altar call, I expect people that are not saved to lift up their hands. Let me ask again. How many of you would want a gift from, not Pastor James, from the Holy Spirit before the service is over? Okay, I see some hands. May God answer, answer the desire of your heart. Amen. Amen. So the gifts of the Spirit are products of God's generosity. Let me say it again. They cannot be earned. They cannot be merited. You cannot work for it. But the fruit, however, is another thing altogether. For the fruit, you will have to go through a process of growth and maturity. What I'm saying is that if you plant a mango tree this year, chances that you will eat from that mango tree this year are very slim. In fact, I am still praying over wanting to cut down the mango tree I planted in my compound. Because about one year, I mean about five years now, but the much, much it has done, it has produced so far, we've counted, one, it has not come up to ten. In five years, I think that is a very, very bad production. So I'm thinking about cutting it down and um, plant something else. Fruit have to be nurtured. Fruit have to be grown. Okay? But for gifts, instantaneous. You get it now? Difference number four. Although the gifts can be imparted generously, It is important to also mention in passing that sometimes we really need to seek them prayerfully. Somebody can get the gift of the speaking in tongues or prophecy. You can have the gift of prophecy without anything else. But imagine if you say, listen, I believe that I should be able to lay hands on the sick and get them healed. That means you are talking about gifts of... Um, 
healings to be given. But let us say you don't have that walking, but what, what, what you have is the gift of prophecy. You, you know, you can, it's your, the Holy Spirit is God, your Father. You can actually go in prayer seeking him and say, Lord, Lord Holy Spirit, I want that one to be added to you too. And the Bible said, Jesus Christ said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Now listen, to, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit, the giver of gifts, to those who ask them. So sometimes, the gifts, let me say it again, the gifts are free, generously, freely given, but sometimes we need to seek for particular gifts. Again, let me read. I know we have not gone to that, but give me the last verse of chapter 12. Again, I'll look here. The last verse of chapter 12, I think 31, I believe. 1 Corinthians 12, 31. Earnestly desire the best gifts. That's what he says earnestly desire the best gift. Now, like I said, the fruit, on the, on the other hand, have to be cultivated, nurtured with care and patience. Sometimes, I need to add this. Sometimes the fruit, the fruit, not gifts, the fruit, you may have to seek that through prayer and deliverance. I know we don't do that much of the time. The fruit is the character and the nature of God. Let us say that somebody has a particular problem with anger. Um, you know that anger is not the nature of God, right? But let us say that you, that is your weakness. That means you have to do away with anger. The opposite of it is love, is self-control. You have to have that, those fruit inside of you, in your life, in your life. But you, the fruit, to nurture it sometimes, you will have to pray, you will have to seek God, and if there's one particular character defect that has been always, like we said in Hebrew 12, that has become a weight and the sin that easily beset you, the only way to get over and get out of it is to prayerfully seek God. Take some time to fast and say, this thing must die in my life. Amen. Sometimes when, because be, behind those character defects, immorality, lying, and other things, there are some demonic powers or learned lifestyles. And as you today like to always believe and say ancestral spirits and some negative altars. <laughs> I don't like taking those languages like that because they are extra biblical languages. But it is now the common lingua in Christendom. But, so sometimes if you notice that you've been struggling with a particular character defect and you really need to get over it, you may want to, I, I may want to recommend, take some time to fast and seek God's face and say, this thing has to go, this thing has to go, this thing. When you do that, sometimes you'll be able to get rid of it. And then of course, in the same way, ask God to fill you with, you know, patience, with uh, gentleness, with purity, other, you know, character, God-likeness characters. So it, the, fruit, the fruit has to be nurtured. That, that's the point I'm talking about. It has to be nurtured sometimes prayerfully to get the character and the nature of God. Again, when we come to talk about the fruit, we will go deeply into that. One of the gifts, how many have I given you? Four. Four. Okay, take this five, uh, fifth one. The gifts are temporal. They are what? Temporal. Number two, they are, they, having them is no guarantee of you making heaven. I want to be very brutally frank about this. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 13, verse 8, 9, and 10. 1 Corinthians 13, 8, 9, and 10. Love never fails. I want every Christian that can read to say that. Go. Love never fails. Say with that one more time again. Love never fails. Uh, what is it that not, doesn't fail? Love. Okay. But whether they are, what is love? If, now, I'm, you are not supposed to be able to know that because I have not taught it. But those of you who know Bible not enough, between the gifts and the fruit, what is love? Gift or fruit? It's a fruit. 
See, fruit never fail. Love never fail. But whether they are prophecies, and what is prophecy? Gift of fruit. Gift of fruit? Gift. So whether they are prophecies, they will fail. Whether they are tongues, and what is tongue again? Gift of fruit? Gift. They will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will, what is knowledge? Gift of fruit? Gifts. So three gifts, they will fail or cease. One fruit never fails. Next, next, next line. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, perfect, complete, come. When is that? When we see him face to face. When Christ comes, when we meet him. When that which is perfect comes, then that which is in part will be done away with. What is that in part? Those are the things, those are the gifts that helps us today to know a bit about God. So what are we saying? Gifts are temporal. Fruits, however, are permanent. Even after the rapture, we may not need gifts anymore because there's nobody to heal, so you don't need the gifts of healing or prophecy. But you will need the fruit. You will live, actually, in eternity with the fruit, the character of God. And that means that today, as I speak, if you have all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, there is no guarantee that that will make heaven. Because you will have power, 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 but you will not have the character and the nature of God. And that is what takes you to heaven. So the fruit are very important because that is what will last. In fact, 2 Peter chapter 1, let's read 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 11. I need to make this very, very clear. 2 Peter chapter 1, let's read, look, at, look at this again. But also for this very reason, Peter is saying, this is Peter, you are born again, oh. And Peter is saying, giving all diligence, add to your being born again, what? Virtue, we will talk about virtue. Virtue is, another language for virtue is excellence. Character excellence. Okay, moral excellence. Morally, you don't tell lies, you don't change figures, you don't exaggerate. You're morally, morally, you are a good person. That's what virtue means. And so to be born again is good. But you know born again people exaggerate and sometimes tell lies. They don't have virtue. Born again, but no virtue. That's what he's saying. And so Peter is saying, you are born again, but add virtue to it. Number two, to virtue, add also what? These are what we call salvation additives. Add, pile upon salvation. Don't just say, I'm born again. Mama, mama, mama. Oh, oh. Shh, shh. Do you have virtue? Do you have knowledge? To knowledge what again? We are reading to verse 8. Self-control and to self-control, perseverance and to perseverance, and to godliness, and to brotherly kindness. And sometimes when I look at these scriptures, I say, what is the difference between brotherly kindness and love? Oh yeah, there is. So you see, you can be born again without all of this. Now, look at what he said. Now, no, let's go stay with verse 8. Look at what Paul will conclude. He said, but if, if, if these things are yours and not in droplets, not in small, 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 they are abound in you, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is that clear enough? And then later on when you go home, Maybe we can read a few more verses because we need to take it to verse 11. But he who lacks these things, what are those things? The character, the nature of God, love, brotherly kindness, all of those. If you lack these things, you are short-sighted even to what? You mean a born-again person can be short-sighted and blind? And he has forgotten that he was once. 
what, that he was once saved. Is it possible? Some people, look, okay, let's go. Going quickly. Therefore, brethren, brethren, not unbeliever, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election. How? Sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Last verse, verse 11. For so an entrance into the kingdom of God is supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord Jesus and our Savior. Are you getting this? So just the fact that, oh, I am saved, I can speak in tongues. <laughs> Wait a minute, there's a lot more to do before entrance is assured to us. Are you getting this? It's so glad to have you in Sunday service. But do you know how many things that we still need to work on? And whenever these things are lacking in your life, seek them. That's why the fruit is important. Important. That's why I want to quickly teach and do away with the gifts so that I can go to the serious stuff, the fruit. Because that's the character. That is what takes us into God's kingdom. That's what is eternal. Okay? Now, let me say a few words about the gifts and then we'll wrap up there and get ready. Let me say a few things about the gifts themselves. There are some facts you need to know about the gifts. I have just finished comparing the gifts and the fruit. Now, I'm, everything I say now will be focused on gift alone. No more. I'm not going to talk about fruit. Number one, facts. Fact number one, that the gifts of the Spirit is for the old church. Verse 7 says, as the Spirit wills. The gifts are for the old church. Like we said before, they cannot be earned, they cannot be merited. They must simply be received by faith, by, just like you received salvation. Let me say again, my brother, the reason why I'm teaching this thing is not to tell you what you don't know. Most of you already know what gifts of the Spirit and fruit of the Spirit are. If you've been a Christian for some time, you already know them. I don't need to teach you these things. Because these are common basic lessons that we should, should have learned. But why am I teaching them? Because I want these things to become practiced and available in the church, abundantly working. The other Sunday when we were praying and worshiping God, somebody was trying to prophesy over there somewhere in the church like this, but no chance was given to that person to be able to prophesy, which is a gift of the Spirit, so that it can do what the Holy Spirit was trying to say through that channel. Why? Because we have not taught this thing, so the whole church does not know how to respond when the Holy Spirit is trying to say something and he is the Lord of his church. So we silence him in that very form. When people are not educated, something goes bad. Number two, you won't have that, and I'm coming to all of that, you won't, you won't, you won't how, have these gifts operate because faith for them comes by Hearing, faith for anything in Christianity comes by hearing. That's the reason why we are teaching these things. Not that you don't know them, but we want to teach and bring everybody up to date. And that is why I know you are a Sunday, Sunday medicine. You give every excuse not to come to church in weekdays, but you will lose out most of the time if you don't come. This uh, continue now because I'll be teaching on both Wednesday and on Sunday. So number one, the gifts of the Spirit is for everybody. It's for everybody in the church. They cannot be earned. They cannot be merited. They can simply be received. I will be praying shortly as I round up. Everybody that wants any of these gifts can actually ask the giver and let us see his generosity work on you. But remember, you have to receive it by faith. We can't force you to accept Jesus Christ. Salvation. As important as it that, until when you opened your heart and said, I receive it, something happened in you. And today, if somebody asks you, how do you know you are saved? You tell the person, I'm saved. I know I am saved. It is in the same way an exercise of the faith you receive any of the gifts. And re but remember, he gives as he wills, not you will. So don't claim something he has not given to you. You are sitting down here and said, I have a message bench. 
Where? It's in the car park. Oh yeah, let's go and see it now. You are claiming a gift you don't have. That's not what we are saying. But if, if, if he is giving it to you, we will, we will come to that. So the gift is for the old church. Number two, I, have you gotten that? Number two, God wants every believer to be a recipient. I'm just emphasizing that. Every believer, meaning it is not only for pastors, it's not only for ministers, it's not only for called people to the ministry. Everyone, if you have given your life to Christ, God wants you to have it, but as he wills. Number three, they are called manifestation. I, I want to emphasize this word. This, this blessed me. And if you get it, it will bless you. But, verse 7 of our text says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. The manifestation of the Spirit, that's a key word. The manifestation of the Spirit. The manifestation of the Spirit. Say that with me. The what does the word manifest mean? To show forth. See, the Holy Spirit is an invisible God. Unlike Jesus Christ, when he was in human form, he was visible. But the Holy Spirit has never been visible to any person. He is a spirit. And there are so many ways he walks in us and with us when at this stands here to sing that how many of you know the Holy Spirit is upon him? But he doesn't know and nobody can see it. So he walks with us in different ways. But there are few, now listen to this, there are few times when he chooses to unveil make known, manifest the fact that he is with you and he is the one that is making you do that. The gifts of the spirit are one, some of the few ways in which an invisible spirit chooses to make himself visible through his actions. I don't know whether I made sense to you. They are the manifestations of the Godhead, but is administered by the invisible Holy Spirit in ways that he chooses, he chooses to make his actions and his results visible and perceivable to the senses. He chooses today in your life or through somebody else. He says, listen, I, I want to let people know. It's like the wind, Jesus Christ said, John chapter 3. The wind blows where it listed. We can't see the wind, but when the wind bends the tree, you know that that's the action of the wind you cannot see. So the Holy Spirit, through the gifts of the Spirit, shows forth himself. May his actions show forth that he's present in your life. Let your wives see it. Let your children know it. Let your church members know it. Let your boss and your co-workers in your office know that the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And he does that. One of the ways he does that is through the gifts of the Spirit. He makes his presence perceivable, seen, known, noticed, his actions, not in his person. Oh, God, I'll come to it very soon. And then, lastly, they are... Totally, the gifts we are talking about, they are totally and entirely supernatural. Supernatural means God operated, not man. Every of these gifts are supernatural. And they are designed to achieve results way beyond our natural abilities or knowledge. Let me make a few comments and then I'll, I'll get ready to, we are getting ready to pray. I said, all the gifts of the Spirit are supernatural. They are God-operated, not man. Sometimes when you are watching the Nollywood Nigerian films, they will try to create a scenario in drama that tells you that um, in the church, things like speaking in tongues happen. You know, they will try to mimic certain things. And they will even try to make some sounds like, la 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 la, ma 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 ma
What are they trying to do? They are trying to mimic speaking in um, tongues. Okay, now here comes the question. Is that production, what you had in that film, is it the gift of the Holy Spirit? Yes or no? How do you know? Answer me. Simple question. How do you know that is not the gift? It was not prompted by the Holy Spirit. It didn't rise from the Holy Spirit. But how about when we are in the church like this and we start praying and some of us, some of us, our minds are distracted and we are not focused and just because you have been used to speaking in tongues and you two open your mouth and start to say, labaka, baka, shasha, laka, da, da, da. tell me true or false. Most of the times we born again Christian also just starts off like Nollywood people and you know very well if you want to be sincere that that is not coming from So notice, a supernatural thing can be operated by man. And if you are in the spirit, you will know when somebody is in the flesh. See, what, what, don't worry, by the time maybe Wednesday or other day come, when I'm going to go into one by one of these gifts, one of the gifts is in, um, designing of spirit. And in designing of spirit is one of the gifts that enables you to know to read, and people always think, oh, demon spirit. No, no, that is just only one. Designing of spirit will help you know the original, the real intent and the purpose and the source of what a man does, the character, the behavior. What is the motive why that sister did what she just did? It's a gift of designing of spirit. Because see, the human being is also a spirit. When that operates, and that's why, see, I want you to learn, and when you, or you understand it, that's number one. Number two, faith for it comes. And then the Bible says, ending up that chapter, that chapter 12, it said, Paul said, earnestly desire the best gift. And we will find out which one is the best gift. But what I'm saying is that the gifts are supernatural. They are not God, they are, sorry, they are, are God-operated, not uh, man-operated. That is why when they operate supernaturally, they are able to achieve results that are far greater than what a, a specialist, a professor can do in any field or in any way. When the word of knowledge operates, you can say something, bring certain truths into existence that a professor of religion will never be able to know. Why? Because supernaturally you are connected to a God who knows all things and is speaking through you. Supernatural, say that word. Every God, every gift of the Holy Spirit is supernatural. Amen? Next, when we come, when, now I'm not finished the found, this introduction, this is part of the introduction. Next time when we come, I will talk to you about the nature and the, their purpose. What is the purpose or purpose of these things? And most importantly, why are they rare, rarely seen operating in the church? Why? That's what we're going to do. Because the moment we answer these questions, you see the Holy Spirit. See, nobody is more generous than God, your Father. He wants to minister these things. And because I want to pray, I may probably want to answer that question way ahead of time. Why is it so rare? Two reasons. Number one, ignorance. What was the first sentence? Anybody remember the first sentence of our text? Now concerning spiritual, spiritual gifts, I don't want you to be... What are they? How do they operate? How? In what form? This and that. Ignorant. We're going to deal with that. And then, number two, what's their purpose? And what is the motive behind the desire? Why do you want it? 
so that me too I can prophesy. Hey, do hey, hey. say as the Lord. Oh, mm, 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 mm. And of course, you will have to vibrate a little bit. Hey, hey, hey. When we come to that, I will teach on how to <laughs> how the operation is. If you are vibrating, now, nah, yeah, it's possible to vibrate, but if you are vibrating, I know it's not Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit doesn't cause people to vibrate. He can make you, but he doesn't. The Holy Spirit will never force himself on you. The main difference between him and demon, demons force you, the Holy Spirit doesn't. Does he have the power to, fall, to, to move you? Yeah. He's, remember, he's going, to work, he's going to be the one to capture you, to rapture you and carry you. Not only you, thousands of us at the same time. Remember, he's the one that broke open that sealed grave of Jesus Christ, rolled away the stone and allowed Jesus Christ to come out. He, he is the power but never uses that against you. But he can induce you. He can move you to doing something, but never places his force, a force on you. But he wants, but one thing you know about him, because he is God, is he is generous. I am saying this because I'm about to pray. In every of our teachings in this series, it will end up with activation prayer, which is what I'm about to do. I'm about to pray, and those like those who have not accepted Christ would accept Christ. There are some of you who know enough already without even my teaching to say, Holy Spirit, I'm ready. There are some of you who are ministers and leaders in the church, you know a lot. Come on, why are you going to wait till tomorrow what you can receive today? You ready? So why are, you, why are you waiting, still sitting down? I want you to stand up with me. See how long it takes them to sit, stand up? Oh, you've been sitting down for some time. I understand now. Okay. Okay. Let me run, ta- run through what you are going to do, and I'm going to give you some few seconds to do it. Number one, this is how we activate. Number one, Kabulu Shakatapota. For those of us who have been born again now, the first step is be filled with the Holy Spirit. How many of you already have passed that step? I am filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me hear you. Let me see your hand. Okay? You already passed the first step. Number two, keep your heart focused on who? Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I want, this is my pause. Mike, would you come? I want to... Give it to him. Okay? Now, give it back to me. Give it to me now. Give it to me. Am I talking to you? <laughs> who, am I, who was I talking to? But was I paying attention to him? No. That makes the receiving difficult. Because see, you stand and you are about to... Sp- we're about to pray, but your heart right now is in the rice that is waiting for you. Yeah. You don't get it. And I keep telling you, and I'll let me say it one more time again. Speaking in tongues without your mind focused on the Holy Spirit is sin. Sin. You will never be able to have two gifts. Number one, you can't prophesy. You will never be able to have the gift of interpretation of tongues. If you are ever speaking in tongues without focusing on him, then you are equal to Nollywood people. He will give you utterance, but only when you are paying attention to the giver. You are listening to him. As you are speaking in tongues, your focus, your mindset, your thought pattern, you are thinking. You are thinking. You are focused on him. You are focused on him because at that moment he can whisper, he can say something, he can do something to say, do like this. When you're focused like that, that's how. Are you getting it so far? Fill with the Holy Spirit, give him the attention, open up the channels of your heart. Hearing, seeing, touch, sensitivity, be open. And then, and then, be sensitive. To what is happening to you. 
Be sensitive to what is happening to you. Certain things may be new. Some suggestions might be new. He, he might whisper certain things to you. Thoughts, ideas, actions. Say those words. Thoughts, ideas. There are some he may want you to do now. There are some he may want you to do later. Now, I want to say something. The Holy Spirit will never force you to do anything. That's number one. Number two. Anytime the Holy Spirit is walking in and through you, you always have the power to stop it. Let me repeat that again. The Holy Spirit can walk through you, he can speak through you, he can prophesy through you, but while you are, he is prophesying through you, you have the power to overrule him. Is that clear? Let me say it again. See, that's the Holy Spirit. He's a helper. He never does that. He never forces anybody. So while he's giving you tongues to speak, while he's giving you prophecy, while he's giving you any of those gifts as you are walking, or even if you choose not to walk, he won't force you. But let us say you are, you are speaking in tongues. And said, well, he's still going. But he said, I, I stop. I, I want to go out. He said, okay. That is the reason why, listen to me, when we are now praying in tongues and somebody is prophesying and there is stopping, the church leadership is stopping you, ringing a bell and says stop and you can't stop, a demon takes over. That is you, your arrogance and rebellion going on, not the Holy Spirit anymore. Are you with me so far? Again, this is the reason why he's not operating. Know how he does it. Because what the rulership, the leadership of the church has the final say wherever it's operating. Even the Holy Spirit submits to the, Holy, to the leadership of the church. And one more last thing before we pray. The Holy Spirit is not the author of confusion. Amen. Everything he does is... Uh, Orderly, 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 orderly. He, remember, he wants to bless you. And probably more than blessing you, he wants to bless somebody by your side too, through you. Through you. So he can speak through you, he can energize you, but he wants to reach out to somebody else. He might want to bless everybody. Remember, his, his, his gifts are for the whole church. Want to bless everybody. But he want, he's looking for a channel to use. Would you allow him to use you? Would you? Would you? And whenever he is using you, you can control yourself. And when you begin to fall down to the ground and begin to shake and say, hey! You know, some people, when we, the anointing comes on them, you know, they roll on the ground, right? Can I tell you something about that? Because I know the youth were having their worship and a lot of that was happening. And they don't, they don't know sometimes the difference. The Holy Spirit coming on you will never make you roll on the ground. No. That's not how it works. But when the power of God comes, you can fall down. But <laughs> something else is manifest. Because the power of God is coming to react with something negative inside of you. He is no doubt doing a cleaning job inside of you. And that's why the manifestation takes place. They are good. They are great. But it is now the point I make, it is not the Holy Spirit doing the, the spinning and the shouting and this thing. But the power of the Holy Spirit is on you to dealing with something unseen. This is where other ministers that are gifted now can, can come out without, I mean with the help of the Holy Spirit, deal with the environmental sanitation that needs to be done. Are, 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 you, are you understanding this? It is nothing to be ashamed of, but you need to understand how he works. 
but he is not going to throw you down and begin to roll on the ground. He doesn't do that. You can do that. While he is on you, you can do that. So when you see somebody doing like that, there are two possibilities. The emotions of the person is running the wire. The person is trying his best to convince everybody is the power of the Holy Spirit inside of him. You don't need to convince us, we don't agree. Okay? Number two, it could be a demon spirit reacting to the power of God coming down and is doing that. But the pure Holy Spirit, gentle. You can be bold. We're going to come to that. When it comes on you, it changes your appearance to a degree. Boldness comes in. Confidence comes in. And we're going to come to talk about all of those, okay? That's why I can't wait to go into all of these things. But again, he never takes control over you that you lose your control. That's the point I'm trying to make. Finally, I think I need to say this. Don't prophesy. Don't interpret tongues. It's the gifts of, they are gifts of the Holy Spirit. The moment you do operate in those gifts, you are giving everybody around you the power to judge you. This is what the Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. If something is revealed to somebody to speak in the church, let him speak and let the others judge. The moment you prophesy, you empower me to be able to say, I doubt it whether that is God or not. So if you don't want me to judge you, if you don't want your brother by your side to judge you, don't prophesy. That's simple as that. But if it is the Holy Spirit, others will confirm. That is God. That is, that is, that is God. That is God. So understand this. And while you are prophesying, hey, the Lord says, and that yea is another problem I, I have. Yea. Thus says the Lord. Maybe I will come to that later on when I come to speak about that. <laughs> but for now, let me simply put it that way. Don't avoid ever using that phrase, thus says, thus says the Lord. Let me say it again. As much as possible, desist from using the phrase, thus says the Lord. As your pastor, how many times have you heard me say that? And when we teach, you will come to understand the reason why. Because there are, okay, let's, let's leave that. This is what I feel the Lord is saying. I believe this is what the Lord is saying. That's, you can say that. But don't say, thus says the Lord. Because when you say, thus says the Lord, you are now quoting God. And you stand the danger of being judged by God to say, no, I didn't say that. And I don't want to be found guilty of lying against God. Lying against Pastor Andrew? Yes, I can agree. You can, we can quarrel and finish with it, but against God? I want to be. I want to be very careful. Is it possible that has happened? Every day. As a pastor, I can tell you, every day it happens. Until you mature, you begin to realize the fact that much of what you thought was God. It wasn't. It's your spirit telling you something. Was it right? Yeah, it could be right. But be very, very careful. You've got to be sure that you are sure you know what you are when you say, Thus is the Lord. Because once you say, Thus the Lord, you have, you have automatically stopped me from judging you. How can I judge God? When you are telling me, this is what God is saying. Who can say, na lie? So who is like you or... You are getting me, right? Uh-huh. But be, see, I didn't want to say this just now because I didn't want to frighten you. Because you've got to be open for the Holy Spirit to come. But at the same time, I don't want you to cross boundaries. Okay? Be free to say that. All I am saying is this. If God is giving you a word to say, you don't have to, okay, this is the you don't have to shake. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, no. You can, you can say, with your eyes open. Yeah. 
if God is prophesying through you today as we're about to pray, you can choose to give the prophecy next week instead of now. But, 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 but the Holy Spirit, yeah, the Holy Spirit, but you have the power to say when to say it. That is where church leadership can say, all right, time up, no more prophecy. Hold it. But I must prophet. I'm a, that is demon. Demon has taken over. Because demon will always want to have his own way. But the Holy Spirit, at every single time you have control, he will never force you. Never. As you are speaking, you can't stop. I, I, will, I think it's, it's, it's okay. There are a lot of things to, but I think this should be okay. Right now, we are ready to start. First and foremost, for everybody, oh, listen, children up there, if there is anybody, you see, if I have 10 adults and five children, 10 adults, five children, and if I pray to activate the gifts, chances are that the five children, all will have them. And the men, the adults, only about 50 to 30% will have it. Why? Because the children, remember, you have accept, you repent and become like. They are open. And I wish that they understand these things and they are open and they are in the spirit and teach and people guiding them like that. They are open in spirit. Bam! You will see things, I mean, you will see manifestation in their life. And parents, I'm saying this for your own good. Because we are dolls. Whenever we have it, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that later on in the series. But whenever, as we pray like this, you are going to be so serious and, hmm. And that's another thing again. Hmm. 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 When you are not, when you, when you cannot do those things, he, he just leaves you alone. You are too difficult to control. See? You are too conscious of the people around you. You are too conscious of the people around you. No, no, no. Just give him your attention. Can you do that now? We are going to do this for 10 minutes. That may be too long, but 10 minutes. And if you are not activated at this very point, then wait for eight, eight nights of praise and worship starting tomorrow. I'm sure they are going to have in their program enough of time for activation. That's the reason I'm not one reason I'm teaching all this. Are you ready, right? First and foremost, how many of you are grateful for what you have learned today? Lift up your hands and thank him. Now, you are cutting away from everybody now. Listen to my voice with your eyes closed. Focus on only him now. You are about to receive, so don't be distracted. Just thank him. Somebody's going to get something before they walk out of this place. Just thank him. Somebody's going to be activated. And as you are thanking him now, go ahead and begin to use his language to thank him. And when you are speaking in tongues again at this point, don't worry about whether you are sounding loud, you are disturbing. This is the time you have freedom to disturb your neighbor. Go ahead as loud as you can, to, you can say it. Don't be too cons conscious of your neighbor. This is you and the master. Go ahead. Come on. I said go ahead. It's he, you and him now. Praise him. If you are too conscious about others, you may not. That's what they all that's what the apostles were doing they spoke so loud Jerusalem had them the whole of Jerusalem had them the whole of Jerusalem had them children begin to speak in tongues if you can focus concentrate focus concentrate, focus. concentrate. Likimbo saka lada lekri kalumbro boboza masa tiki keke galamando anatange le boko saka ndele kialaba. 
a new measure a new measure is coming a new measure is coming a new measure open up your channels open up your spirit focus 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 Now tell him, Lord Holy Spirit, I receive your gifts now. I receive your gift by faith. I receive the word of knowledge. I receive the word of wisdom. I receive faith. I receive discernment of spirit. I receive gifts of healing. I receive prophecy. I receive faith. I receive working of miracles. I receive interpretation of tongues. Come on, whichever one of these gifts. It's time to receive. You have five more minutes now. Receive blessing by faith, by faith, by faith. Just like you got born again by faith. Listen to him. Listen to him while you are praying. Listen to him while you are praying. He might be saying something. He may whisper to you something. Focus, focus. Elebonga shantala matiki kimboko sanga latata legre bokoka zalima. Open their ears, Lord. Open their ears and their heart. Open their minds, God. Open, open, open. Receive right now. Receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Receive. Let it come. Be baptized in the Spirit. Be activated in the inside. I cause, I cause your spirit man be quickened by the gifts. Quickened by the gifts. As we are speaking in tongues, let there be impartation. Let there be impartation. Let there be activation. Let there be a quickening right now. And there be a release, a release into your spirit, a release into your spirit. Receive right now, receive the gifts, receive the gifts. We quicken your spirit, man. Open up, open up, receive, open up, receive, open up. In Jesus' name we pray. Shut up, shut up. No time yet. I don't want other people to be cut off. Thank God somebody's getting it, but please listen. We've already spoken about that. I want everybody to be in it together before we start hearing. Thank God somebody's already getting it. That means it's easier for others to get it now. Now, by faith, how many of you believe? He has imparted something. In the same way, by simple faith, with your hands lifted, thank him for it. By faith, that thing you prayed for, believe he has imparted it. And as you believe, we command those things activated, those gifts activated, activated, quickened by the same Holy Spirit, quickened, impartation, let's take place now, quickening, let's, now listen as you are thanking him, listen, listen, listen in your heart, you don't listen with these physical ears, listen to him in your heart as you are thanking him, he is whispering something, be childlike as as much as you can but go ahead and thank him I, I didn't say be quiet listen to him in your spirit as you are thanking him praising him exalting him listen listen because he will be whispering something he will be giving you directives he will be saying something to you the greatest prophecy you can receive is for yourself for yourself he will be telling you be bold my daughter I have given you this gift from now on, you will be enabled in this form. He will be telling you things like that. That's how you come to know which gift you now have. He will be telling you, pray more, my sister, my daughter. I want you to spend more time in fasting. 
give me some time in study of the Bible. He will tell you things particularly. He is because he, he, he wants to stir up something. He is, he is getting at something inside of you. In Jesus' name. See, this is Sunday. I don't have the time. Come Wednesday, we will give more time to all of this activation process. So I'm going to wrap it up like this in this very quick, quick way that we're going to get it. When people give their life to Christ, we tell them to lift up their hands, say after me, and they receive it, and it is done, provided they believe what they have done is real. It is in the same way you receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Would you say this prayer after me right now, but with all of your heart, from your inside? Dear Holy Spirit, Dear Holy Spirit, thank you for your generosity. I am open. Kiki Dagado. I am open. Say that again. Ready to receive from your generosity. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, I, I feel, I feel a release. It's, it's like a river flooding. It's like when Lagos was flooded a moment ago. This is happening right now because you are open. I, I, I feel that right now. I, if you are sensitive right now, you can also feel it. Say like this one more time again. I receive you. Your fullness. Your generosity. Activate me. Quicken me. Feel me. I am open. Feel me to overflowing. Feel me to overflowing. Lose my tongue. Open my mouth. Open my ears. And cause me to hear you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I am about to pray my final prayer. This is the activation point. I'm about to place the live wire of the Holy Spirit together with the negative inside of you. There will be, going to be a spark. When it, when it comes, I want you to speak out in tongues loud, loud and clear without waiting for anybody. Liteke Galuka Latange Abalan Krabunga. Holy Spirit, Lord, Holy Spirit, these are your people. These are your people. Jesus the Master said, when they ask, you will give them. You will give them what they ask for. Now, Lord, we ask you, Holy Spirit, in this congregation, we are open to you. We are open. Look at your people hungry for you. Come, descend, activate every heart. Quicken every spirit. Feel every heart. Quicken. Make alive. Come alive. Sensitize. Quicken. Awaken. Quicken. Impart. 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 Generate. Quicken. Awaken. Sensitize. Generate. Quicken. Aboloka said, Be filled. Be filled. Be filled. Obokosaka. Oh yeah, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel. Right now, I feel his power. I feel his flow. I feel his flow. Feeling you. Feeling you. Feeling you. Feeling you. A quickening, a making alive. While you are speaking, please listen. There are thoughts and ideas that will be flowing through you. You will receive instructions. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to know that something has taken place. Something has been ignited inside of you. Now listen. Because we, have not, we are yet to go into talk by, on this item one by one, how they operate. Whether through prophecy, through vision, through trance, or speaking in tongues, interpretation, you will not be able to know what you have received. Or oh, trust me. Between now and the next lesson, 
Some of you will have, begin to have prophetic dreams. And in a dream, you will see what you received in today's service. You will see yourself working it out. That's him explaining to you. You don't need any pastor or anybody to tell you right now. Because an activation has been given. Something has been imparted. He will now explain to you. And you will find yourself doing certain jury. And I beg you, whatever you do, spend more time in prayer and the reading of the word. Suddenly, light will come over your eyes. You will begin to understand things like you've never seen them before. Between now and next time when we come, pray more, read the Bible more, worship God more, worship, speak in tongues more. Because what you have received can, by faith can only be sustained by continuing in it. Amen. Amen. Before you take your seat, let me ask. Is there any person with a pain, a sickness you are feeling, a discomfort in your body? Let me see your hand. You have a discomfort, a pain, and ill health in your body right now. Right now. There is a discomfort, you are pain, you are feeling, not that you used to. Right now. Okay, this is what is going to happen. I want you to put your hand on where that pain is. If it is part of your body you cannot touch, then put that hand on your head. And listen to me now. I am going to ask brothers and sisters around that person, lay hands on the shoulder, just touch, make contact as I pray for that person. You will join me in praying for that person. Now, you that is sick or having pain, focus on that pain. See it disappear. Iboko Shata Nade. You are going to see the gift of healing and the gift of faith operate right now. Right now. Right now. Ready? Go. Those of you close by, begin to pray for that person. Begin to pray for that person. Rebuke that spirit and cause it to go. And you foul messenger of the devil. Go! I rebuke you in the name of the one who called me to stand in this office. In Jesus' name, I break your hold. I break your, 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 your ill health right now. I subdue it. arrest it. And I uproot you out of my brother. Out of my sister. Go! Go! I break your power. Go now. Go. You are dead. I rebuke you, foul spirit behind it. I rebuke you, the Lord rebuke you. Take your hands and go. I command that sickness to die in your body. This moment, every cell in the body of my brother and sister reject you, infirmity. Die! Die in the name of Jesus. I curse you out of that body. And I speak healing. The healing Jesus Christ paid for. Right now, I speak it through the hands of the brethren. I speak it. Let now healing be perfected in your body. Right now, right now. Be healed, pain, go. Go, go, now. You are gone. Demon that was causing that, you are gone. You are dead. Jesus is now Lord in that body. That body is healed. Healed. Never, never get sick again. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Strength comes to that body. Healing comes to that body. Perfected healing right now. In Jesus' name. Because please take note and plan to avail yourselves.